Hello coffee friends. Today we are talking about how to steam milk using your home espresso machine. If you're interested at all in being able to pour latte art, be sure to watch this entire video because it is extremely crucial to get great quality steam milk in order to pour beautiful latte art and you can do it right at home. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I am with Homegrounds, a place for you to go to learn more about brewing and enjoying better quality coffee right at home. If you're new around here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out to any of our newest videos. And also leave us a comment down below letting us know if you have any additional questions about milk steaming, espresso machines, or really anything coffee related. Now before I start getting into the details of milk steaming, let me talk about a few things of what this video is and what it is not. First off, we are going to be steaming milk today with a microfoam texture, meaning really tiny little bubbles, and that is milk that is commonly used in drinks like lattes, cortados, flat whites, and what many people would call a cappuccino. What we are not steaming for today is really heavy, thick, dense foam that you can sculpt into cats or something. That's very simple to do, just aerate your milk the entire time and you're set. Now speaking of all those milk beverages, I'm also not going to be walking through how to make each individual drink because they are all more or less the same. They just have different levels of espresso or milk and in different size cups or different shape cups, whatever. I would recommend just finding what you like and finding how much milk you need to steam for that, it'll take some trial and error. But once you're there, then you are all set. You just need to worry about your milk texture. All right, so let's get started by going through some examples of what we're looking for in our steamed milk and also what we're not looking for. I've gone ahead and steamed three examples. We have an under aerated, a just the right amount, and an over aerated example. Now what we're looking for when we steam milk is like I said earlier, this microfoam. And you can visualize that by picturing wet paint. So not only the surface should be free of any bubbles, some of which you can just tap the pitcher on the table to remove them, but the surface should be nice and flat and shiny, but also as you move it around, it should have some depth to it. Imagine you're looking for something with a little more viscosity than just cold milk because we've introduced air into it. So first, let's take a look at the under aerated example. You can see that this milk looks pretty good. If we're moving it around in the pitcher, you can see that it looks a little thin, but sometimes it can be hard to tell if it's under aerated right away until you start pouring it into espresso. You'll see that as I start to try and pour my heart into this latte, that the milk just kind of falls apart. It doesn't want to keep its shape in the espresso, and it's really hard to pour latte art with under aerated milk. Now let's go to the other extreme and go with over aerated. This example I did isn't that extreme, but hopefully you can at least see that as I swirl the pitcher around that it is definitely thicker than the previous example, and that as we start trying to pour latte art with this, it's there, but it's not as contrasty and you can kind of see a lot of bubbles starting to form at the top after I finish pouring it. And as soon as we start tasting this, it'll be a little too much foam. Now, some people may enjoy this and that's great for you, but the ideal texture that we're looking for is right in between those. So with this last example, you can see that as we swirl it, it has some nice thickness to it, but not too much. The surface is nice and flat and shiny white. And you can see as we start pouring latte art with this, it really starts to flow really nicely. It holds its shape and it has a nice contrast between the milk and the espresso. Okay, so now hopefully you can kind of visualize what we're aiming for in our milk texture. So let's talk about how we actually get there. So let's bring the espresso machine over. All right, so we have the Breville Barista Express here, one of our favorite home espresso machines, and we are going to be practicing steaming milk. Now, a little hack, if you're not wanting to waste a ton of milk trying to learn how to do this, is just to take your steaming pitcher, fill it with water, and just one drop of soap. And that's gonna kind of emulate what happens when you steam milk. You obviously don't want to drink that or pour it into espresso or anything, but it kind of gives you a sense of how milk is going to behave. 
And also, if you don't want to waste too much espresso, you can try using like soy sauce or something like that. Try some things out. Now I'm gonna overlay some clips while I'm walking through this of me using glass, just so you can see where the tip is in relation to the surface of the liquid. Don't steam milk in glass. Um, one, because we have these great milk steaming pitchers, but also you could break the glass and just all these, don't do that. So getting into this, there are two things that we're gonna be focusing on when we steam milk. First is aeration and second is temperature. So starting with aeration, I've been talking a lot about, you know, you wanna make sure you get the right amount of aeration and there's also a proper way to get that aeration. You'll be seeing in a minute how you can identify if you're doing it incorrectly. But in order to get started with this, you're just gonna get your steam wand ready. Always make sure you have a damp rag so that you can clean the steam tip before and after steaming milk. On this machine, I need to give this a minute to warm up and be ready. We'll fast forward through this. Okay, once you have your steam wand ready, we are going to insert the tip of the steam wand just beneath, put it just beneath the surface of your milk. Just beneath, not too deep, not above it, but just beneath before turning on the steam wand. If you are outside of the milk, turn the steam on and then bring it in. You're going to get a lot of big bubbles, not something you wanna do. Now the positioning of the steam wand and the angle that it's at is also gonna be important here because we're gonna be trying to get a sort of whirlpool effect in order to get all the air circulating and spread out evenly throughout the milk. So what we're gonna do, take your steam wand, add an angle to the side of your pitcher. Not right in the middle, not all the way on the end, but I would say just a quarter of the way in. So halfway between the edges of the pitcher and the very center. And by having the steam wand at sort of an angle with the milk right here, we're gonna sort of be pushing the milk around and creating this whirlpool. So once you have your positioning ready in the pitcher, you're going to turn your steam wand on and we are going to just be doing small little bursts of aeration. You're aiming for a sound that sounds like this, not this, or this, but this. If you are way too deep into your pitcher, it'll sound like a child screaming. It's kind of the stereotypical, like when you walk into a coffee shop, what you hear, you don't want to actually be hearing that sound ever. And if you are too far outside of the milk, it's just going to sound like a bunch of gurgling, like, you know what I mean? So now probably the trickiest part of all of this is figuring out the exact amount of aeration you want to introduce into the milk when you steam. And unfortunately, I can't really give an exact metric for what you're aiming for, because this will vary based on how much milk you're using, what milk you're using. That's a whole nother conversation of whole milk, skim milk, dairy alternatives. They all behave differently when steaming them. So it's really a lot of trial and error, unfortunately, in trying to figure out how much aeration to give the milk through the process. It'll become second nature after a while. Now let's divert and talk about temperature for a minute. Obviously you wanna start with cold milk, not only for like normal safety reasons, but it'll also give you the most amount of time in the milk steaming process so that you have sort of more time to work with and you can really get a sense of everything. And now there's a lot of science that goes into milk steam and why everything behaves the way it does. I'm not gonna be going through all of that, but essentially around 100 degrees Fahrenheit is when you want to stop aerating your milk. So you wanna make sure that you get all of your aeration in during the beginning phase of your milk steaming. And by the way, I would highly recommend getting one of those clip-on thermometers so that you can practice with a thermometer and know the exact temperatures. It is extremely helpful. You will start to get a sense of it after a while, but just start off with the thermometer. Anyways, once you hit that 100 degrees, all we're going to do is just a slight bump down beneath the surface. Not all the way to the bottom of the pitcher, but just a small little nudge, just so that you are no longer getting that 
aeration sound. All we want to do is keep up the whirlpool, keep everything moving around, keep it heating up, but just not introduce any more air. And then we're going to keep steaming until we reach around 140 degrees. You don't want to go anywhere past 160 degrees because then you're going to scald the milk and you're just not going to be able to taste anything anymore. Ignore extra hots. So once you hit 140 degrees, just shut off your steam wands. Wait until there is no more air coming out and then pull your pitcher down. If you pull down too early, you're gonna get some extra air that's gonna totally ruin everything that you just did. So just give it a second, wait until it dies down, and then pull it down. And that is how you steam milk. If you have a lot of air bubbles on here, you can sort of tap the pitcher down to get some of those air bubbles out. You can swirl it around. If you have too many and they're really not going away after these few things, then just practice some more. Make sure you're getting a good whirlpool effect throughout the entire steaming and you should incrementally get better and better and better until you have beautiful milk. Next up is just pouring latte art, which will be in the next video that we do. So like I said earlier, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one because I'm gonna be really giving a good deep dive on the steps you should take to go from pouring something as simple as a monk's head to a beautiful swan and making sure that you know all of the basics in order to get through all of that. So thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that it was helpful for you. Until next week, happy brewing. Not gonna drink this.